Okay, guys, I'm here with Mark. Logan went home already, and we're doing some fun and games. This is actually a prototype manifold that Mark made up. It's not for actual production. It's to see how it would work out. And we flowed this against the stocker with a single throttle body. But I think we need to talk about the difference in his 5.3 liter heads versus the 5.3 liter heads I'm doing for DV. Okay, this is the one Mark brought over. This one is completely stock. We did flow this one. We will show you the numbers off of this one. But the chamber is quite a bit different than DV's chamber. You know what I want to do? I want to set up the other head because the other head has got a completely stock chamber. This one doesn't. And this is the chamber and the ports that are completely stock. We have to flow this today. Absolutely. Uh, 89 totally stock. Okay, this is an 89 head totally stock. Notice the different height on that intake valve versus the height of the intake valve here. Now, Mark was talking they have different uh, compression ratios for these uh, V12s. <clears throat> that may be a big part of the compression ratio change. Notice how tall this bathtub is here versus this bathtub. You got to remember, this, is, this hasn't been touched. This is completely stock from Jaguar. Mark picked up on something that I could completely miss. This is a these are brand new heads DV gave me. They've never been run. They got no carbon or anything on them. Somehow or other, I missed that. Okay, here is an intake cutaway of the Jag head. And I had to pull out this older Volkswagen two valve per cylinder. Let's see if we can get them both in the same frame. You think manufacturers look at other people's uh, designs? Possibility. I will tell you one thing. I got these running pretty good. And what was, you know, what's another thing that's interesting is first time I looked at this exhaust, I was like, ugh, right, bent way too low. It actually works quite well. And this Volkswagen, somewhere I have the cutaway of the exhaust. Very similar to this. Very similar. Now, the Volkswagen ports are smaller because it's a much smaller engine. If you look at the size, right, this is an exhaust. This is an intake. They're much smaller than uh, the this completely stock intake on the Jag. Mark did some really nice work with the... Uh, I'm going to guess this is a silicone. Yeah, it's a modeling rubber, yes. So it is nice because we get to really look at how it's designed. Notice the curve on it, right? Now let's figure, I may have said it curved the wrong way. Okay, it should be biased this way to dump towards the center because this is our exhaust right here, right? Correct. Okay, so is it biased that way? Not really. <laughs> it really isn't. It, it's just a little bit here. But it has a, a lot of bias on this side. Sorry about my filthy hands, guys. Been on the bench all day. My hands were this dirty, though, at 8 o'clock. Now, this is obviously stock. It says stock right on it. Really is not a bad design. I like the intake design. Can it be improved? You betcha. Now, is it going to be that easy to improve? Because uh, Mark says these fed the bigger engines pretty well. Yeah, same, they, same cylinder head. Uh, I think I know the intake. The intake was this, it was um, <clears throat> the five point three intake fed the six liter just fine. Now whether they changed the port and the head at all, I have no idea. Now you know what's interesting is we're gonna we're gonna take. He did an entire intake runner. Okay, the intakes are pretty much a work of art. But it's interesting the way they match the cylinder head. Let's do that with the rubber. It's nice to have Mark here because I have more than <laughs> more than two hands for a change. I think that needs to be turned a little bit like that, and that's where we are. Notice the uh, the interesting angle they have this set up at. Right, there's our injector bung, and 
Mark did some uh, Dykem experiments with this, with the intake on, and uh, where was the Dykem showing? It had good swirl in the port, but then the um, the heavy collection of the Dykem was on the short side? short side turn. Short side. Yep. Interesting. Just that usually doesn't happen with the other designs. It usually goes to the back of the bowl. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting to test. You can see they have a nice they have a nice radius going into the plenum, right? And the plenum is nice is nice and big. Let's take a look at that uh, that intake up here. Okay, you can see from the design, nice big plenum, right? It is. They shaped it to really, I think do do. I think it's a nice design. The one thing that is interesting, because it is six cylinders long, the outer runners are the longest and the center runners are the shortest. So they're going to all be uh, resonant at a different RPM. Mm -hmm. So first thing I said to Mark when I looked at it, I go, I bet these Jags have a very flat torque curve. What was, was I right? I think from the graphs I've seen when they do horsepower torque, it is a fairly flat, yes. I, I would believe it. I would believe it. Now, I complained about this exhaust port quite a bit, but after we got it on the bench, it works quite well. And judging from the silicone, uh, you can probably tell why. Take a look at how much they bias that port over. Does that mean it can't be improved? Of course it can be improved, but it works quite well the way it is, even though it's a very low port. These uh, these really give you a good indication. I'm going to have to start doing this. Uh, more crap to mix in store. <laughs> With a shelf life. Okay, you can see this is the other side. Really doesn't have any bias, right? But this side is deep. It's got a deep bias on that side. Because this is, this is the cylinder wall here. Okay. So... Mark and I were talking about exhaust and we were talking about anti-reversion. It looks like the stock exhaust manifolds are about a 1.5 diameter and the stock exhaust ports are about 1.3. So you got a nice overhang. I mean, you can actually see, right? Now, this is quite a bit bigger than this, I would think. No, a I do see carbon on that. I would say alignment makes a big difference. When you put these on, scope them and get them just right. Okay, so it is log style, but it's it's relatively generous. Okay. Now, when we flowed these and we flowed the intakes, we taped off all the runners that we weren't using. So all the flows you guys are going to see are through the intake, through the throttle body, and through the exhaust manifolds. Okay, so what I have written here is Mark's 89 Jag 5.3 shallow chamber. The chamber we used was 6B. Uh, we had the intake and the throttle body single on it. So these flow numbers are what we've got through here. Now, I should explain something because other Jag guys are going to see these flow numbers. They're going to say, oh, they're not even close. These are probably high, and I will explain to you guys why. Basically, Mark brought me a head gasket, and my smaller bore adapter is way too small. He brought us a cylinder. Let's take a look at that. Looks like a cast iron cylinder that goes into an aluminum block. Nice and heavy, nice and thick. Actually, a nice piece. Mark uses this. This goes right into his flow bench. I didn't see an easy way to get this all done, so I just drilled my bore adapter. We used the Jag head gasket, so that is actually the right size, but it is going into a larger bore, so that is going to skew our numbers. I would think the intake and the exhaust are going to be a little higher than you see from other stock Jag stuff.
<laughs> All right, guys. So this is the ported head with the stock intake, but this has the dock chamber in it. Let's uh, let's show you guys what the dock chamber looks like. You're up. All right. Um, this chamber was uh, designed by a friend of mine, and he did some analysis with flame propagation, and we wanted to get rid of that that brutal step that's along this edge and understood that yes the the, the, the swirl the lean swirl is was designed into this but so what he wanted to do was to cut down this ramp into the exhaust area and then also expose more of this plug and get rid of this this little ramp this little ramp that's right here and also this area running back up towards the intake. You wanted to cut all of this down. And so that's what we did. Also with this, um, I have increased the diameter of this uh, valve seat in the, in the, the, the throat, throat area throat, yeah. up to the, about the 90% range, 90% um, or less. Um, but yeah, that was the experiment with this head was to try to, from his analysis, flame front propagation was going to be better in this configuration drastically reducing any hot spots on these sharp edges that you know that these uh, motors with the higher from the factory like that yeah with the higher compression they they had a tendency for detonation um so anyways that's was the idea behind this chamber okay so this is our bone stock intake port stock intake manifold stock throttle body now this has a ported intake port and it has dock chambers okay how did it do we got a minus a plus minus 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 plus 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 you got big pluses up high but mark how many uh, how high do you did you say you can get the uh, lift I think the lift on a stock cam is going to be it's under 400,000 so say 380 yeah stock is all the way at 400 so an aftermarket probably only goes to about 500 I would yeah, think at on this. Mass, yes I think yeah. so I think so I mean 158 going all the way through the throttle body the intake manifold and the cylinder head is not bad how big are these valves uh, inch 625 on intake. 1.625. And inch 340. 1.34 exhaust. Okay. I didn't talk about the the swirl curve on this. Uh, the way I have the bench set up. Let's take a look at the head. Okay. If we... The way I had it set up on the bench, right? If it was swirling this direction, like it's designed for it would be a negative swirl so keep that in mind when you look at the swirls completely stock we have forward forward and then it gets very very low right here i got one minus plus 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 and then it starts to go off the short side at only 0.35 and then we get some decent swirl now would this work it's a very it's a high, high turbulent chamber there's no question about it because you're changing the direction of your swirl okay you have two swirl fronts colliding like i said before not necessarily a bad thing now what happened to our swirl with the modified port and the modified chamber minus 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 these are in the right direction then we have four of them where it's almost dead literally okay no swirl and then at 400 she starts to move but our swirls are not as high now we used the same uh, 6b port on each one so it's the same intake port it's the same cylinder head port it's the same exhaust port so we can compare them directly to each other let's take a look at our exhaust flows okay as far as our exhaust flows this was completely stock this is with the ported exhaust port and the different chamber design. Let's put pluses and minuses in. Okay, you can see they picked up quite a bit on the exhaust. Now, similar to what happens to me, right? I usually, when I port stuff, I lose some of my low lift flow, which is not necessarily bad, by the way. Okay, 
and then they got nice gains especially up around 350 you got you're starting to really get some good gains at this point now you have to remember this is going through the exhaust manifold and it's the longest port on the exhaust manifold okay we're flowing out of this one so it's got the longest path out Mark was explaining about some racing team that actually separated these and built like a collector right into it, but it looked completely stock on the outside. Tricky racers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the dead stock one, and we ran it through Wallace calculators. It says it's good enough to make 427 horsepower between 5,600 and 7,100 RPM. It's got an 86% intake to exhaust ratio at 500 unless I calculated it wrong. How did we do on the ported one? It gained some horsepower, right? The RPM went up a little bit at the low end and went up a little bit on the high end and our exhaust ratio is now 91% going through manifolds. Okay, last one we're going to cover on this video, because this video is already getting long. Now, it's the same head, but it's got the intake manifold that wasn't ported, but it has the dual throttle bodies on it. So let's see if having more available air makes a difference as far as how much the, the intake port will take in. We can also take a look at our swirls, okay? All right, you got a plus, minus, minus. Notice how small they are. Plus, plus, very small, very small. Plus, very small, small, minus, plus, plus. All right, it makes a difference at the higher lift because you dra you, you have more of a, a drag on the system, right? So it likes the higher, the higher lifts. As far as our swirl, interesting, we got 26, we got a minus 26 here. Remember, they should all be minuses, but they're not. We got plus, 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 plus. We got six pluses. And one, two, three, one, two, th no, we got, sorry. This is a plus, I scribbled on it. Plus, plus, plus plus, 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 and only three minuses. It, makes, it made a big difference with the swirl because let's take a quick look at the inside of that intake, how he did that with the, with the wood. All right, looks really hard to see on, on the phone. Let's see if we can get better light on that. Okay, you can see the way he angled the wood because we were feeding out of that long runner in the very corner. Tough to get it in focus. But you can see the angle that the air has to turn. Now, you have to remember the stalker has got only one throttle body in the middle, so it has to turn a lot more. You would think it would be a lot easier this way. I'm sure it would have a completely different tip in uh, with the dual throttle bodies. All right, Mark, finish us up. Uh, yes, yes. Well, I want to thank Charlie very much for... Uh, oh, thank you, Mark, this, for bringing all this stuff. This work that we've done today. DV, thanks for the heads that have got me all screwed up. <laughs> uh, we're going to do some research and find out what this is all about. Um, because, yeah, the chamber work is totally different between the heads I'm used to and the heads that DV picked up. Whether they're a different compression like we spoke to, talked about, not sure yet. But uh, we'll get some more answers on that one. Excellent. But once again, thank you very much, Sean. Thank you, Mark.